Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. Thanksgiving is always an interesting holiday for me, especially in connection with what happens at Christmas. The word holiday comes directly from the words holy day, and if there's a holy day in our society and culture, Christmas is it. On Christmas, we celebrate the birth of God among us. It is a special time with truly religious importance and meaning. And yet we fill the celebration with Santa Claus and innumerable secular meanings. Things get interesting when I compare that with Thanksgiving, which technically is a secular holiday infused with lots of religious meaning. It's a day when we ponder our blessings in life and give thanks to God for them. The juxtaposition of those two has often perplexed me. So, this week of Thanksgiving, I'm simply sharing some sermons I have written that were given at various Thanksgiving worship services over the years. Here's one I called Amazing Grace. We were looking for a sedate ride. My family and I had spent the day at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, more than 20 years ago now, and while Dollywood back then was not the most thrilling of theme parks, it was enough for us when my children were small. In fact, I remember it as the day that one of my children rode his first adult roller coaster. So after that, it was time to find something a little more calm to settle our nerves, and that's when we saw the train. Described as a short ride out to appreciate the beauty of the mountains, I suspected that somewhere along the way we'd have an Indian or outlaw attack, and sure enough, we did. My boys loved it. But then on the way back in, they stopped the train in the middle of a meadow Sitting there, the people around us talked and chatted, and maybe because I have pastor's ears, I noticed it quickly. As we sat in that meadow, looking up at the beautiful, majestic, strong mountains framed against an azure sky, they were playing music from the speakers over our heads. I don't know who the singer was, maybe Dolly Parton, but it was just the singer's voice. There were no instruments accompanying as she sang. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Verse by verse she went on, and that's when the most amazing thing happened. Slowly, Over the course of a few minutes, all the talking around us faded away until by the end we sat there on that train in silence. All of us, enraptured by the grace of God's creation and the grace of God's love for us. Author Mary Oliver writes, It must be a great disappointment to God if we are not dazzled at least ten times a day. In other words, we are so wonderfully and amazingly blessed that we should be dazzled even with a tiny awareness of God. We have so much to be thankful for. And all of God's gifts that should should bedazzle us Grace has to be number one. God's grace is all around us. God's grace is for us. God's grace is because God loves us. That's what that last verse of Psalm 23 means. We typically get get so caught up in images of shepherds and sheep and dark valleys and green pastures that we kind of skip through the last verse as if it's just a nice way to end the psalm. But pay attention. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Right there at the end, we are reminded of God's grace, that God's blessings don't just come, but instead seek us out, that we are welcomed into God's house forever. Huh. Why, it's enough to make a whole train load of people gape in awe. So that's my invitation to you. We have so much to be thankful for. But in the midst of all the celebration this week, take a moment to be dazzled by God's amazing grace. You'll never be the same again. Thanks for watching. And remember to let this day belong to God.